Hello, and welcome to Reasons to Hope. This is our 52nd week in a long year together. So I just invite you to join us. I want to um, confess that I'm sick, uh, but I really didn't want to miss this opportunity to connect with you for this 52nd week together. And so as you are joining us now, I just want all of you to just bear witness to a whole year of looking for reasons to hope and leaning into gratitude and just think about what that has meant, uh, not only to me, but to our community and the ways that it's impacted you. And I would love to hear from you. Um, where are you at right now? You know, it's not an easy time. A lot of us are sick and struggling and I just love to hear, you know, drop a comment, um, where are you at, not only geographically, but how are you feeling? What's going on in your life? Like one feeling word or one word to describe where you're at this moment to kind of just bring us together. So it's so good to see you all. John, CK Gunn, Holden Rhodes, Patty Baltz. Thank you so much for being here for the 52nd week. I'm Kate Tucker and it has been my great joy to sort of lead us on this journey toward hope this year as we've taken moments to create a practice of gratitude. And I just wanted to share some things that I got to write for Root and Vine um, as I looked back over the year and the things that we've sort of learned together. And one thing that really struck me was you would think after 52 weeks of looking for reasons to hope, we would know what we were talking about. But for me personally, I feel so much more like Job in the Old Testament, you know, when he is standing in complete awe of God and just basically talking to his friends who are trying to give him advice about what to do with all of his suffering. And he's just saying, look, I have no idea. We really, he says, um, can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the almighty? And it's like, for me, like the answer is absolutely not <laughs> no. But I think that that is so cool. And I think that that's what Paul was talking about in the New Testament when he was writing to the Romans and he was saying, oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments and his paths beyond tracing out. I mean, it's like after a whole year of coming together and sharing, you know, where we're at, I have no words. I really, I have nothing but awe and gratitude and, um, and, and a lot of questions, you know, I have a lot of questions and I think that, um, that's something that faith allows. And I think that we've learned, you know, in, um, hearing from a lot of the community throughout the weeks on this Instagram live, there's a lot of doubt and fear that goes along with, daring to believe, daring to have hope in the face of darkness, you know? And so I want to acknowledge that as well. There's a really beautiful, um, one of my favorite poets is Rainer Maria Rilke, who was writing a hundred years ago. And he writes about living the questions. And then when I got to interview Betty Reed Soskin this past year, who's one of our great national treasures and a hundred year old um, park ranger, you can find that article at Garden and Health, our sister uh, publication. But Betty also talked about, you know, living the questions. And when I asked her, you know, what has your 99 years taught you? And she, she said that I don't know, that, I, that after all these years, I really don't know. And I want to read to you what Rilke says, because I think it's encouraging in times when um, we're living with great uncertainty. And he says, be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart. And try to love the questions themselves, like locked rooms and like books that are written in a very foreign tongue. Do not now seek the answers which cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then you will gradually, without noticing it, live along some distant day into the answer. So... I know right now there are a lot of us living some very serious questions. You know, it's like, um, I'm pretty positive. A lot of us are asking, do I have COVID? Will I get COVID? Does my family member have COVID? Will I, you know, make it through this sickness? Am I gonna end up in the hospital? Will my loved one recover who is in the hospital? Um, these are huge, huge questions. And I want to 
make sure that we acknowledge the the depth of uncertainty and the depth of fear that we are all dealing with no matter how we've been impacted by the events of the past two years um, we are all carrying a lot of uncertainty with us more than we've known before in our in our time and so um, I think that underneath all of that there's this there's this deeper bedrock of hope um, that we've been discovering together over the past year and for me it makes me think of the chronicles of Narnia if any of you have ever read that by C.S. Lewis there's the lion the witch in the wardrobe the first book and um, this lion Aslan he is sacrificed on the stone table in this land of Narnia where it's always winter and never Christmas because it's ruled by this witch and uh, and the witch thinks that she has the victory because she has uh, slain Aslan. But then later when he, when the children come and, and um, you know, and they're crying and they're, and they're taking off his, the ropes and they're, and they can't believe that their, their lion, their king has been slain. He comes to life. Spoiler alert. Sorry if you haven't read this book. And if you haven't, you should totally read it. You should read it to your kids. You should read it again. It's a great book to read as an adult too. It's so full of magic, but Aslan talks about this deeper magic from before the dawn of time because the witch knew of this deep magic and Aslan said there was a deeper magic. And, you know, I think, you you know, if you're looking at that through the lens of the Christian faith, which is what C.S. Lewis wrote that book, you know, as a believer, as a Christian, you, we see those very clear parallels to the Christ uh, child coming to earth and, you know, dying on the cross and then, you know, being resurrected as our hope. For eternal life and so at this time of year when it's the darkest you know the the nights are long the days are short and we are all feeling afraid we also just celebrated christmas even if we celebrated it in isolation like i did uh we celebrated the birth of the christ child and so that means that there is hope that hope has arrived and that we can lean into something you know, my mom used to always say, "Under it's in the Bible, but she always would say, you know, underneath are the everlasting arms. And I think that's what, if, if you're spending a lot of time alone right now because you're isolating or quarantining or whatever, it can feel, um, it can feel, it can feel so lonely. And so I just want to encourage you to remember that underneath are the everlasting arms. And I found this this uh, prayer that my mom left. She died five years ago, and when she died, I found um, this notebook paper that she had handwritten this prayer in her beautiful handwriting, and it's mostly faded now, but I've read it so many times. Uh, and it says, it's basically a combination, I think, of a bunch of her favorite scripture, but um, I'm going to read it for you here. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. May your Father in heaven hold you with strong arms. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I have COVID brain anyway. <laughs> May your Father in heaven hold you with strong arms. May Jesus give you his peace that passes understanding. And may the Holy Spirit sustain you with hope. May the God of all peace keep you always in the shelter of his wings. This is my prayer for you. So there you have it. We did it. 52 weeks of hope. And it's really been such a blessing and such a gift. And I want to remind you that all of that, the whole book of hope is at Root and Vine. You can go to rootandvinenews.com and you can read 52 weeks of encouragement from myself and other guest writers there's so much more to come. I hope you'll stay with us and continue to share your reasons to hope. You can use the hashtag reasons to hope tag at Root and Vine News. Thank you all for being here with me. It's been such a blessing. Happy New Year. I love you all. <laughs>